I hope that uh, once we go through this, that uh, some of the GraphQL stuff makes more sense. Uh, if it doesn't, um, just let me know, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try to you know, take the feedback and see um, what we can improve on. But at the very least, this should help with just setting up a Django project and going through all of the steps. Because I'm not going to do anything um, fancy, but we are going to build this GraphQL API really quick, build a Postgres database, um, connect it to React, and just make sure that our data is coming through um, in React. And so we'll start out with the back end. We need to have it install our virtual environment. Activate it. Got some dependencies. Um, as far as I can tell, when you install Graphene Django, um, you'll get the sub um, dependencies that you need. And so I seem to only need these two Psychop G binary and um, Graphene Django. And so Graphene Django is uh, a tool that is going to be required. So that's something when we're talking about the trade-offs for whether you should or should not introduce GraphQL, um, you can't interact with GraphQL without a GraphQL service. So just by, if, if you, whether you get use a third-party GraphQL API or you build your own, um, as soon as you make the decision to go into that territory, um, it affects your tech stack because you're going to need to implement other things just to be able to use it. Um, and so just like all dependencies, you'll have to kind of determine for each project, like is this, you know, is something gonna change with Apollo server or this graphene service that I'm using for Django and will that destroy my project, you know, a year from now um, is a worthwhile thought. Um, so we've just, we basically just installed, you know, stuff for Postgres and stuff for um, building the GraphQL API. And so now we can make our project. Uh, what's it? Find the Django, start project. We'll call this a movies project because we're going to make a movies uh, database or API. That looks good. Then we need to make our app, so we'll have a um, movies app, right? So, um, .py start app movies, and then I usually at this point just go ahead and um, set up my database. So we're gonna make our Docker file, Docker pose. YAML. We're just going to open up our code and paste in the same setup that we've seen a bunch of times. Um, this point, though, now that we've got our code open, we might as well, we need to go to our settings. We added an app. So um, we basically need to add Graphene Django because we've installed it and we'll need it for Django to interact with GraphQL, and then our movies app. Okay, and then another thing, since we just did our Docker Compose, we should probably just go ahead and switch our database settings. Um, this isn't completely necessary, but at this point, right, we've We've set up a database and we've um, pointed to it in our, our settings. So we should be able to test, test real quick and do Docker Compose up, run, and then all we're really looking for is if something's not right, when we run our server, it's going to fail because it's not going to be able to connect to the database. Um, And so we run our server and it tells us there's migrations, but the important thing is it's running. So that's all we really care about there. And that just kind of lets us know that we haven't made any small syntax errors or mistakes. 
Um, now we made a uh, movies app, and that's because we plan on having a movies model. Um, this is you know some really lazy, non-validated fields, um, but like I said, we're we're just trying to do kind of a, a simple example here. And so the last thing that I need to do is get some fixture data really quick. And so we'll make a fixtures folder in the movies app. And then I've, I've got this somewhere on the, Got some JSON in here. We'll add it to our our project. We've we've talked about fixtures before, but notice these line up with our app and our movies model, and so we'll be able to load this into our database uh, just for convenience. Uh, I'm going to rename this. So I don't forget. And I'm just going to call it movies. You can name it whatever you want. It's just I know that I'm going to remember movies when I need to load the data. Um, and so at this point, we should be able to um, basically make migrations. Migrate, and then if our fixture is set up right, we load data, and then we named it movies.json, so movies should work. And so at this point, now we have um, data in our database, and then this isn't 100% necessary, but same thing. We're in the server really quick. Make sure there's not any errors. Um, and then now we're, you know, this is where if we weren't doing anything with GraphQL, we would go write a Django view and then use Django REST framework, and we would um, build the API to be RESTful. Um, and so what we're going to do that's going to be different is add some stuff to our um, settings and uh, this is where we're going to start talking about the schema that I was mentioning and stumbling over trying to explain earlier. Um, so we'll add this graphing object and schema is going to point to your project name dot schema dot schema. And so we're going to go to our project name. We're going to write uh, a schema dot py. And in this file, we're going to make a schema object essentially um but i'll copy in the code first and then talk about it a little bit okay so in here the schema.py this is what we were kind of looking at when i wrote that type typescript api you can imagine that was like a really lazy index.ts or whatever and i and i just dumped everything into one file um, Normally, you, you would have something separated like this, um, but you want to make your schema at the root level, and so at your project level in Django. And this has to do with, remember, GraphQL is only going to have one endpoint. And so one of the nice things is whatever that endpoint is, you'll be able to get everything you want from there. Um, and so um, does this look familiar to anyone? I know this, this part does to me. That part looks like a serializer to me. Right, right. And, and that's pretty much exactly what we've got going on here. And we're not going to use regular serializers for GraphQL. We, we need Graphene and Django to communicate and do some work. Um, but the end result is we still need to serialize data and send it to the, to the front end. Um, but this is what I was talking about. Um, you know how when we looked at my type definitions and Resolver, like when I wrote the type definitions for the Pokemon API, you could see all the fields because I had to declare an object and describe what it looked like. We're not doing that in Django because Django is an ORM. And, and so our model, Django just knows what this looks like. We don't have to write an object of, we, we already did basically. Um, and so that's what makes 
some of this stuff a little hard to follow when you're doing it in Django um, because it's going to keep doing things like that where it's actually handling a lot of work that you don't really know about um, and it's, you're just following the docs and trying to get things um, to work, if that makes sense. Um, we're almost there on the on the Django stuff. So um, now let's go to our URLs that we'll still need to have URLs. I'm just going to get rid of these. And there's not, not too much different here. It looks pretty much like our normal URLs. Um, but notice we usually don't have something like this in our project one, but that's okay. It's like we're, we're basically, we have to import this GraphQL view and then um, the CRF, CSRF exempt um, is necessary. It's provided by the docs. So that basically you'll get an error related to CSRF if you don't. Um, and you can handle it other ways, but uh, for the simple example, we're just going to keep running with this. And so now um, let's go ahead and run our server again. We should be able to, if we did everything right, grab uh, All right, let's pull that over. We do have something wrong. We've got a, a schema that's required to be provided for GraphQL. Okay, let's look at He didn't save. Okay, the server's running. So if we go to our, our GraphQL endpoint, um, now we'll see it's already got our only query filled in. I didn't write any of this, um, but I can immediately click it and get our data. And then, uh, like I mentioned before, I can change anything I want about this field. And so that some of this is, is nice. It would be helpful if I had more tables or a more um, interesting database to, to manipulate some of these queries with. Um, but you know, you could make several pages or features that all use the same kind of related data and you can maybe only use the titles or maybe use the rating and the ID for, for something. But, um, and that's kind of the interesting thing too, is just all the different ways that you'll be able to, to combine them. But anyways, I'm going to try not to ramble too much. So we've got this working. Um, so this is working. Let's just go ahead and shut it down because uh, I do want to show you guys the React stuff too. I don't know what that is. Oh. Where is where am I? Okay. All right, so now we're in our front end. Uh, hopefully we got this. Let me get this out of the way. Um, we don't need this either. And okay. And so now we need to npm create the latest and get our React started. We'll get React. Select JavaScript. Okay, install. And then uh, what we need for the um, GraphQL service is we're going to use a follow client. And so I mentioned earlier, like services like keyword. Uh, so Apollo Client and Graphene, those are just like two examples of ways that you can implement 
consuming or creating a GraphQL server, but there's other services or other technology that you can use to, to do it as well. Um, so it's like my, my suggestion is just pick one that you're comfortable with or familiar with where the documentation is good. Um, and I like to, to Apollo by it um, and graphene, so that's why I picked it. Um, but we need that and GraphQL. Um, and that's really just about it for the changes. I'm going to open this up and get rid of some of our boilerplate code. Uh, so let's see, we can, we don't need app. Um, get rid of all this. Rid of all of that junk as well. Clear this out, and then I always like to do this. I don't know if anybody else does uh, what is it? margin zero px adding zero px. I don't know why I find I just get a lot of a lot less uh, issues when I do that. Um, I'm just going to put the background color to to red. That should let me know that we're we're hooked up. Um, so let's run our server. Bring over the shiny hello. Um, so our React app is running. It's killing me. Okay. And so now that we imported a Apollo client, we've got a few things that we're going to want to do. Um, I decided to do this in uh, main. It, it doesn't really matter. You could do this in the app. Um, it's very similar to like the idea of like context where we're going to take this, uh, we're, we're going to import Apollo client, but we're going to create an in instance of um, the client. And then we're basically going to pass or pass that in as a prop um, and wrap our application. Uh, sounds a lot more complicated than it is. Um, so we'll just import this. Um, and then right here, we're defining our URL that we want to use. We really could just do it in line there if we want to, but this will help us for later when things have to change. Um, and then back to our, I talked about wrapping it. So we have our application right here. So we just need to use our Apollo pr provider. We'll just take this um, closing tag and make sure it wraps the entire application. And so by doing that, um, our React application can use the Apollo client to handle GraphQL. Um, and so that's, Part of the initial setup. Um, next, um, this is more of a, I guess, uh, separating your code. Like you could, you can directly write some of these queries in. I like doing it uh, this way from what I have messed around with. I'm going to make an API folder, and then we're just going to make a queries.js file. And here we're importing. GQL, which is some GraphQL stuff that we're using from Apollo client. And, you know, if we think back to those, those type definitions or what I was looking at with the GraphQL GUI, you know, this is requesting all the fields for our movies, basically. And I could take some of these off if I wanted to change it. Um, but what we're doing is we're going to export this variable to use for this query, basically. Um, and you generally do it, you'll write it in all caps. That way it's um, noticeable from what I could tell and what I was able to find reading. That seems to be the convention um, for doing it. Um, and it worked well, so I like it. Um, the last thing that we need is to basically change this and use our query. Um, and so this is another interesting thing too, um, but we basically get a hook with the follow client. So this hook is, is going to what is going to be what calls um, 
the GraphQL and endpoint and basically manages this state. And so that's an important thing too, is like notice that we're not importing state here. Um, we could and should if we're gonna do more things, but we don't need to um, for this. And so uh, we can destructure loading error and data by default from use query. And loading will just be a message that says it's loading, but it's really the Boolean that we can use for that. And then error will only actually return something if there's an error. And then down here, we're using our data, uh, right? Data to all movies. And so that's something significant to, to notice if we looked at our um, our queries, it's called all movies. So when we get our data, it's in data dot, you know, what we named the, um, the query, essentially. Um, all right, let's check and see if it works. Who was this running the whole time? Oof, we've got a fail to fetch. Um, I actually know what the issue is. Does anybody else? It's okay, because I know we've kind of been just jumping around, looking at lots of different code, talking about lots of new things. Um, but we missed one step where we're communicating um, on localhost from the same origin, but we're on two different ports. Um, and we haven't really put anything in to let Django know that's okay. Is it like a core zero then? Yeah, and that's, um, that's what we need to add. But as you can tell, it's like by, you know, go to this, I don't think actually, we might get it. Let's see if I refresh. Yeah, I don't. I thought that I found something that you know pointed it out to me earlier, but um, I can't see it, and um, it's actually why I left it out on purpose. But let's open up our back end real quick and just fix that. And so, uh, sorry, we've got to add middleware. So we need to go to our project um, and we need to add a middleware.py and then basically copy in um, some middleware. And then once we have it, um, same thing, it'll, it'll be you know, project name, dot middleware and the class that we had. Um, so let's see. Copy that real quick and then go to our settings and then server. I think you need the comma. You put you didn't put the comma. Oh, did I? Thank you, thank you. I was like, I know it's got to be a uh, a typo because I did. Yeah, I see it. Does that work? And boom, look at that. We got you know a ton of movies um, instantly. I know this isn't like the the most uh, you know, cool demonstration, but I wanted to try and show you guys how to. To me, it's kind of useless to learn about the GraphQL or figure out how to mess around with it if we don't talk about how to get it into the stack that you're working in. Um, and it's like, yeah. Um, any questions or uh, anything? Can you go over when it would be uh, advantageous to use this and when not again? Yeah, yeah, I can't. Let me see if I can actually, I'm gonna try and go to my uh, my app and then 
go directly to that um, pinpoint again. There's something I was trying to do earlier, and we'll see if we can do this. Because um, I think, okay, I can I can get data here, and sorry, I'll try to, if I get too far off topic, uh, just try to um, remind me, sorry. Um, but one of the interesting things, we're gonna make, we, we can make this one query here, right? And then we can change some of the fields and it's like, okay, that's kind of neat. Um, but in a lot of ways, like who cares? Um, now, another thing that you definitely can't do in, in REST, you know, besides that is, uh, you know, here we're going to ask for more more objects essentially, and um, you know, these have a name, ID, field, whatever. Um, and when we run this, we'll get you know all of this data. But if I scroll all the way down, we got the moves too. Um, and there's actually no limit to this. Like there's like that's actually it's it's one of the strengths, but it's also one of the weaknesses. Um, one of the I guess scarier thoughts with GraphQL is it does put a little bit more decision making on the front end and um, in like relation to optimization and um, runtime and, and queries and stuff like that. Because I, I can add all of these, uh, well, we're, we're just clicking buttons here, but these probably still work. But you'll notice as I add all these random fields to query, each, each time I add it, our data is going up, or we're creating this massive list of JSON data, essentially. And some of this stuff is redundant. I, I, I can query shiny Pokemon and Pokemon and, and pull the same fields from both if I if I want. I'm trying to get back. I know you asked, you know, when when is this advantageous? Um, and it's like it's advantageous if if you have that situation where you need to get data from multiple places, but you don't want to make four requests per user per per interaction with the feature kind of kind of deal. And so that's where things quickly ramped up in the social apps. Um, Cause yeah, as soon as you start implementing these things that try to share things, uh, uh, we can, because it's a query language, I didn't cover any of this, but you can deal with relations just like you do in, in um, SQL, like a many to many and a one to one and, and all of that. So you can define relations and you can make requests. Um, but part of the advantage is, you know, this is all, uh, it's like harder to see, like I was saying earlier, because I don't have as many tables to pull from, but say we had like seven or eight useful tables to pull from in our data, you can kind of see, you know, just the fact that I can keep repeating or getting all of the data I need if you're in an application that has just massive amounts of data, essentially, and you're going to have to retrieve it often for your users, then, um, you know, that may be a good case for it. It's actually, I would say it's not really worth it for a simple Proud app. So that's like where the stress is coming on the, like, heavy um, reliance on, like, relations or features around them or users that are interested in that data or you're trying to collect lots of data that may not be related in the database, but it's related to your users or whatever. Um, and so let me... I think. Mm. No, I think uh, I don't think that was a good example. Sorry. I don't know. Did any of that help, or did that um, not? Is that still just kind of confusing on when it would be a good idea to use it? Um, I, I think it makes a little more sense to me now. Um, if I if I understand correctly, it's kind of like to to limit um, making. Um, multiple like API calls for so that you can kind of do it all at once, get all the information you need at once. Is that correct? Yeah, you can because because it's possible to basically like we, we haven't really done a lot with the resolvers, but 
your resolvers work a lot. It, I mean, they're practically like your Django view almost. And it's like you're writing a function that does some work and once and it's probably going to query the database. And then once it's done with its work, it sends it somewhere. Um, totally lost my train of thought, though. That's all good. I, I think it, it makes sense to me now. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that is all I got on the GraphQL stuff for now. Um, cool. Thanks for letting me give it a shot, guys. Thanks for putting that together.